Continuing with our supernatural stories, today is all about a detective in Marvel Comics named Hannibal King. Let's talk about him. First, thanks for watching JLS Comics. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our weekly content. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our story. Created by Marv Wolfman and Gene Colan, Hannibal King's story begins during the Halloween season of 1974, where he debuted in a comic book called Tomb of Dracula with issue 25. Hannibal King was born and raised in Wisconsin in the United States. When he grew up, he became a private detective, and one of his cases took him to London, England, where he was bitten by a vampire named Deacon Frost, the same vampire that killed the mother of the vampire hunter, Blade. Hannibal was terrified of fully turning and petrified of what he would do if that happened, and so, by sheer force of immense will, he was able to hold off the turning into a full vampire. And to do this, Hannibal refused to feed on humans and kill them, so he bought blood or drank from human corpses and dead animals to keep the thirst at bay, but never from live humans. Through these tough times, Hannibal kept his private investigation firm open, though he had to adapt to only investigating at night, safe away from the light of day. In his debut story, a lady named Adrian came to Hannibal's office to ask for his help investigating the death of her husband who'd been bitten in the jugular by Dracula. Investigating the death, Hannibal wound up at a small office down on the docks. Inside, he ran into Dracula and one of his slaves, a guy he shot in the arm named O'Brien. And O'Brien was running the shipping office that was sending Dracula's coffins to Norway and to Denmark ahead of his arrival. So Hannibal went back to his office and met with Adrian to tell what fate had befallen her mate. And then he ruminated over how to handle the white-haired vampire, how to take care of Dracula. In Tomb of Dracula issue 44, Blade broke into Hannibal King's office thinking it the home of the guy who killed his mother, but instead he ran into Hannibal King. After a brief scuffle, they realized they were both after Deacon Frost, so they paired up for the vampire hunt. Before they killed Deacon Frost, though, Hannibal and Blade investigated Deacon's operations around Boston, and they uncovered that Frost was storing a Blade body double inside a coffin. The other detour they took was to go to Logan Airport to pick up Blade's girlfriend Saffron, and then Blade and her hooked up back at his apartment in Cambridge, Mass, while they sent Hannibal away for an hour so they could, well, take care of things. After a bit of time and following another lead, they burst in on an apartment to find Blade's doppelganger ready for a fight. The two blades clashed and fought with fists and fangs and wooden stakes, but when the double seemingly won, he turned his anger toward Hannibal King, saying he would destroy King too. The blade double attacked Hannibal King as Hannibal fought back, grabbing one of Blade's own daggers and slicing the doppelganger's face with it. He then stabbed Blade with a knife and then he fell to the ground, writhing in agony on the carpet while Hannibal crashed out a window and escaped. I'll get you, King. Wherever you hide, I'll destroy you, the double of Blade yelled after him. Blade's double transformed into a bat form and chased Hannibal all the way to an estate not too far away from where Dracula was having a party. Hannibal fell to the ground, feigning tripping on a broken fence, but it was a ploy to grab a sharp wooden fence picket from the ground, and as the Blade double approached, Hannibal lunged with the picket in hand, impaling the Blade double in the throat and the chest with the spiked piece of wood. He stumbled into the estate where Dracula's party was, followed by Blade, and then Blade and Dracula ended up fighting too. As Dracula lifted the double of Blade over his head and threw him out a window, Hannibal saw Deacon Frost in among the partygoers, just as Deacon turned into a mist form and wafted away before Hannibal could get to him. Dracula then killed the Blade double, and so Frank Drake, Harold H. Harrell, Rachel Van Helsing, and Saffron buried Blade's body, thinking it to be the original. Later, Hannibal took Damon Hellstrom to Blade's grave. They wanted to dig up Blade because the good Blade became trapped within the evil Blade in the same body, and Hellstrom was the one with the power to be able to separate the two with his magic. Hellstrom pulled the two apart, and the evil double Blade charged Hannibal. His teeth spread wide, but when he lunged, this Blade fell atop a wooden stake and died. Blade got to hook up with Saffron again, and then Blade and Hannibal went out under the veil of blackness of night to break into Deacon Frost's lair, which was a subterranean cavern whose entrance lay hidden beneath a cemetery headstone. Inside, they ran into Deacon Frost and his army of Blade and Hannibal doppelgangers. Blade and Hannibal hacked the body doubles apart and quartered Deacon, but again he managed to get away by turning into a misty wisp of a vampire and flying away through the dark tunnel. They chased him down the tunnel and quartered him again in a laboratory where Deacon threatened to splash a vial of deadly fungus on them. Both Hannibal and Blade threw their daggers at Deacon, which caused him to spill the fungus on himself, and when that happened, he then stumbled back into his machinery and electronics, and the liquid from the jar that contained the deadly fungus splashed all over the electronics, and he collapsed in an electrified pool of death. Blade and Hannibal King made it out of the cavern just as Deacon's machinery exploded and destroyed the entire lair. Later, Blade and Hannibal King shook hands and departed as friends. Hannibal continued taking on investigations, winding up in Wisconsin, investigating cattle mutilations and beating his friend Doug Royce. Royce was then killed by a pair called the Children of Night. Then Hannibal went to England to investigate the death of Rachel Van Helsing, and through that learned that Dracula and his minions were on the hunt for a dark grimoire called the Dark Old. 
Hannibal King met with Doctor Strange and Strange's secretary, Sarah Wolf. Hannibal knew Strange would be his best ally for his trip to the supernatural and the hunt for the Darkhold. And while they were meeting, the Children of the Night attacked in their bird forms, and so Doctor Strange transported them all to another dimension to fight safely. Hannibal struggled with himself. He wanted to help Doctor Strange in this battle, but to do so would mean he would have to turn into his bad form and further give in to his vampiric half, and thereby lose a little bit more of his soul in the process. He weighed the pros and cons, and he did it. As a bat, Hannibal grabbed one of the Children of Nightbirds, and Hannibal asked it what its connection to Dracula was, and it said Darkholders, before falling apart into a pile of ash and feathers. And then back in their reality, Hannibal turned back to human. I'm still new to this shape-changing stuff, he told Doctor Strange and Sarah. When Doctor Strange and Hannibal set out on the night-enshrouded city to continue their hunt for the Darkhold and for Dracula, Strange asked, How long have you been a vampire? And the response was, Four, going on five years. But like I told your secretary, I never sank my teeth into any living thing. Their conversation was cut short when the Eye of Agamotto, now tuned to mystic disruptions of a vampiric nature, alerted them that Dracula's forces were attacking Avengers Mansion. At Avengers Mansion, there was only Jarvis and Captain Marvel to fight against the vampire horde invasion until Doctor Strange and Hannibal King showed up to render aid. Strange sealed the front door with the crimson bands of Sidorak. And then Scarlet Witch rode up and attacked the horde by firing her hex bolts at them, and when the bolts knocked them all down, Strange hit them with the mists of Morpheus. It turns out the Avengers had the Darkhold book locked away in their mansion. This whole attack above ground was a distraction so that Dracula could swim up through some deep underground waterways and try to steal the book himself. But they got there just in time and Dracula was deceived when they all met him in the sublevels where Hannibal, Captain Marvel, Scarlet Witch, and Doctor Strange were all dressed as masters of the mystic arts, wearing their own cloaks of levitation and blending in with Strange's spell to make Dracula think that there was a handful of Doctor Stranges who were all surrounding him. Hannibal got Dracula in a headlock, but Dracula threw Hannibal right into Captain Marvel and almost got the Darkhold book, but Doctor Strange cast a spell on it to prevent him from doing so. And then Captain Marvel used her light powers to hit Dracula with heavy UV rays, which drove him away, though his Darkholder cult remained at large, so their work was not yet done. Doctor Strange had sent the Darkhold book to hide in the bowels of Strange's departed foe, Mordo's empty castle in the heart of the Transylvania Alps. So Doctor Strange then went to Benedict Wong's place to meet with Hannibal King, Frank Drake, and Blade. Though he sent the book away to hide, Strange quickly realized that they would actually need to get the Darkhold and perform a ritual that was contained within the book to stop Dracula and his Darkholder's cult. So the group all jumped on a Concord jet and headed to Europe. The book contained within it the Montesi formula, which when the ritual was done, could wipe out all vampires, but they ran the risk of killing Hannibal in the process. Hannibal told him, for what it's worth, I died four years ago. The way I look at it, I got four extra years, and if I can take the rest of my fellow bloodsuckers with me when I go, all the better. At Dracula's castle, they fought with the Darkholders, and then Doctor Strange cast a Sphere of Nervalon spell to entomb the book in a mystic orb and to make it harmless. It took all of them to take on Dracula when he showed up at the castle, drawn by the book, and even then Doctor Strange had to take him to a realm called the World of Doctor Strange to fight while Hannibal and the team used the Demon Cthone Conjuring spell to disintegrate Dracula in the other realm. It worked well, and Hannibal collapsed, though Strange, being the doctor he is, had some adrenaline on hand to inject into Hannibal's system, which was a stopgap until they could replace his blood. And to replace his blood, Strange and Wong constructed a hyperbaric chamber to prevent King's tissue from degrading, while they worked furiously to bring him back from the brink of death. Strange and Wong did manage to bring Hannibal King back to life, and he was now human, seemingly free of his vampire curse. And the thing that saved him was that he had vowed not to ever kill for blood, which is what set him apart from his fanged brethren. And for the first time in years, Hannibal stood with his friends to greet a new dawn. In Doctor Strange issue 67, we learn that after the ordeal with Dracula, Hannibal King, Frank Drake, and Blade set up an investigation shop in Boston where they realized that even though Dracula was gone, the Darkholder cult still needed to be taken down. This is how they took on work and got some money to continue that investigation. During this time, Hannibal and Doctor Strange went to an old church in Boston to interrupt a cult ritual and to attack the Darkholders. And together they stopped the Darkholder cult from pulling in an amorphous Cthulhu-esque vampire creature from another dimension. At the end of that story, the group all met up at an Italian restaurant for dinner, during which Drake said, Are there any ordinary cases, Hannibal? And they enjoyed some garlic bread together. In Marvel Comics Presents issue 64, the Darkholder's cult abducted Blade's girl Saffron to use her to bring vampires back to the world, but Hannibal and the team fought back. In 1992, Hannibal starred in a book called Night Stalkers as part of the Rise of the Midnight Suns event. Drake, King, and Blade worked together at their firm called Borderline Investigation Services. 
Doctor Strange had to bring them together with the spirits of Vengeance and Morbius the Living Vampire to fight against Lilith, the Mother of Demons, and her children, which were called the Lilin. The Montezzi formula had been weakened, and so King was feeling the physical effects of his vampire side now. Though he willfully chose his moral stance, his vampiric cells still reacted to blood. Their borderline investigation business was shut down, and yet the team still met up at their old office, needing to get in touch with Doctor Strange. And as they sat around drinking vodka at their old office, Lilith walked in in disguise to hire them to go after the Ghost Riders, Danny Ketch and Johnny Blaze, who were two of the nine people prophesized to prevent Lilith's rule of Earth. They formed an alliance, and so Drake and King then went to MIT to meet with a lady named Silicon Valley to pick up some occult necrotech energy-equipped weaponry. Their first move was to attack the Ghost Riders outside of Old North Church in Boston. Hannibal King jumped on Blade's motorcycle, flashed his fangs, and cranked the throttle on the motorcycle, and he crashed the bike into the wall, but their fight was cut short when one of Lilith's Lillen named Meat Market showed up. Hannibal King ordered an army of rats to swarm onto Meat Market and eat him until Blade could behead him. Doctor Strange then sent them, along with Morbius, Victoria Montezzi, and Professor Hastings, for the final stand against Lilith in Greenland, and thus the first published iteration of the Midnight Suns came to be. In the second issue of Night Stalkers, the team, now equipped with an H-1 Hummer, had to fight Hydra and Baron Von Strucker's new DOA task force. Hydra wanted to capture Hannibal King to create an army of vampiric stormtroopers, so the three of them insulted the DOA unit with Hannibal slicing apart a guy named Pyre. DOA managed to stake Hannibal in the chest and escape with him on a hot air balloon, so Blade and Drake had to go rescue King from Hydra. In flight, as Blade showed up, Hannibal King ripped the stake out of his chest and blew up the propane burner on the hot air balloon, and then jumped out as the hot air balloon crashed down thousands of feet out of the sky into the Charles River below. The denouement of the story, you're not going to believe this, was that Hannibal King went to a cemetery to visit the grave of Kal-El, Superman from DC Comics. And so Hannibal is one of the few characters ever to reference Superman in the modern age outside of a crossover event. And there, he knelt before Clark Kent's headstone, and Hannibal King wept at the death of a hero. Issue 5 promised Hannibal King to be on the trail of the Walking Dead. They took their H-1 Hummer and attacked some necromancers in a cemetery, and Hannibal stood there silent, commanding a pack of undead wolves to attack the necromancers and eat them alive. In the fight, a car blew up with a family in it, and so Frank Castle the Punisher took the lead and hunted down the Night Stalkers, thinking they were guilty for it, but it was a monster named Shiv who'd sacrificed them to the Dark Gods. The Night Stalkers also starred in a book called Midnight Suns Unlimited, which followed the different subgroups on their ongoing adventures, and their first order of business was to save a girl from a horrible demonic gargoyle that had come to life in the north end of Boston. And then back in the Night Stalkers book, Hannibal wanted pain and penance to be punished as he thought himself a monster. So he went to a church, and then when Ghost Rider showed up, Hannibal begged him for the penance stare. When Blade then showed up to fight Ghost Rider, the three had to team up to battle Stone Cold, but not Steve Austin, this was a different Stone Cold. Then Hannibal had to call Morbius to tell him to stop killing so much, otherwise Hannibal and the team would be forced to bring Morbius in, and Blade was suddenly annoyed with Hannibal for being empathetic toward the living vampire. Morbius then came to Hannibal looking for help on how to quell his thirst, but Hannibal wasn't interested in helping him, and when Morbius went on another killing spree, Morbius and Hannibal ended up fighting. Blade and Drake helped in that fight against Morbius, and Blade still wasn't having it, but King and Drake decided ultimately to help Morbius instead of fighting him. And then, Hannibal King, Blade, and Morbius teamed up to fight a guy named Slaughter. During the Midnight Massacre event, Blade was possessed by a page from the Darkhold and became a superpowered Torta Force called Switchblade. Switchblade's first victims were Johnny Blaze and Hannibal King. Switchblade staked Hannibal King and then beheaded him. It wasn't long afterwards when Louise Hastings read from the Darkhold and was able to resurrect Hannibal and the others that Switchblade had murdered. Afterward, King was angry at Blade for what he did during the Midnight Massacre, and he lashed out at him violently, but ultimately smoothed things over enough with Blade so that Blade went with them to an occult shop in New York City for some artifacts, which is when they had a confrontation with Brian, aka Spider-X. And then, while investigating at a prison that had been taken over by a Lullen, Hannibal was transported to a future version of Manhattan taken over by vampires and ruled by his future self. A future self that had given in to his thirst, and who had become the Lord of Death. Blade came to help, and Hannibal staked his future self, appalled at what he might become, at what nightmare may lay ahead. At the end, King asked Blade to kill him if he ever became anything resembling that Lord of Death. In the Siege of Darkness event in 1993, the Midnight Suns had to take on Zarathos and the Fallen, along with Lilith again and her Lilin. They were thought to have been defeated until the two Ghost Riders told their friends that Lilith and Zarathos were dead, but the Night Stalkers wanted to see the bodies, so they went to Cypress Hill Cemetery and ran into some Lilin that they'd never met before and the Midnight Suns continued to seek out Lilith while the rest looked for a source for the mysterious mist. 
The team found a fissure in the ground and ran into Zarathos, Lilith and Erlulan ready to fight. And so the two teams, Midnight Suns, Darkhold Redeemers and their allies, battled on both fronts to beat back evil and save the planet. And the Midnight Suns, which were now the Ghost Riders, Hannibal King, Morbius, Drake, Blade, Vicky Montezzi, Sam Buchanan, and Jinx teamed up with Caretaker and Vengeance to banish the Lilin and the Shadowside Fog to another dimension. At the end of Siege of Darkness, Blade killed Zarathos and ended the war. Not long after this, Hydra sent a Dreadnought to attack the Borderline Investigations building and raise it to the ground. The building had everything Hannibal owned in it and he was devastated, so he went off on his own, defeated. His first stop was for drinks at a bar. Hannibal then met up with Blade, Drake, and Doctor Strange, and Strange told them that Dracula had been cloned, and this clone was called Bloodstorm. Dracula's wife Domini then came to the group to ask for help saving her son Janus, who'd been kidnapped, but after Doctor Strange revealed he'd lied to the group about their formation and their conditions, they were mad and refused to help. Hannibal helped Drake look for his weapon that he named after Linda Blair from The Exorcist, a weapon which was now in the hands of Bloodstorm. They eventually linked up with Blade again to fight Bloodstorm, Vernay, Salome, and Vampire Taj. Vernay got control of Hannibal and Blade was forced to impale and kill Hannibal King, and as he died he told his friends he loved them. Drake also died in that conflict. In Blade's 1994 series, dead Hannibal King and dead Drake were merged into a new incarnation of Dracula, and it wouldn't be until issue 12 when they were separated. In the first issue of Blade's new 98 series, Hannibal reached out to Blade to ask for his help defeating the vampires and undead who'd overrun New Orleans, and it was also in this issue when Simon Garth's daughter Donna Garth had come to him looking for her dad, who she now knew was a zombie. Hannibal went to Club Jugular in New York to look for the Amulet of Dumbala, an artifact which could draw and control the zombie. At the Voodoo Lounge, King discovered that Lilith, Dracula's daughter, had the Amulet of Dumbala, so Hannibal teamed up with Spider-Man to confront Lilith. And Lilith wanted Hannibal to become the new Lord of Vampires, and he pretended to agree in order to get close to her to steal the amulet so he could have Simon Garth rescue Spider-Man. And at the end, Lilith escaped, Simon was laid to rest again, and Hannibal set off for San Francisco. And just in time too, as vampires were kidnapping people in San Francisco, the vampires caught Hannibal and tied him up in an apartment with a homeless man, and after days, Hannibal was forced to give in to his thirst, and he drank blood from a human for the first time ever. This wealthy couple he was helping turned out to be CIA operatives who had stolen computer chips and shared them with Navarro and his vampires. Hannibal found them across town and destroyed their lair, but was forced to make Tatiana into a vampire to save her. Tatiana went to Iraq and went on a killing spree there, and meanwhile Hannibal was finally overcome with depression over everything that had happened, and so he faded away, losing his will to fight, letting his connections with his friends deteriorate, and also losing his business in the process. It wouldn't be until nearly 10 years later when Blade finally came to Hannibal King to ask for his help fighting a super vampire named Draconis. Together they had Draconis Mansion during a party. Beforehand, a priest consecrated the water supply for that part of town, so when Hannibal threw a Molotov cocktail into the party and set off the fire extinguishers, it rained holy water down on the vampire party people, and they all turned to ash. And then Hannibal shot a hole through Draconis with his shotgun round, and Blade drove a stake in his fist through the same shotgun round hole, and as Hannibal watched, Blade ripped Draconis' head from his body. Later, acting on a lead on the Knights of Pendragon that he got from Maria Hill at S.H.I.E.L.D., Blade had Hannibal King help him track down Union Jack. But it turns out Union Jack had already found Hannibal King. They then went to the home of Lucas Cross, and while Blade distracted Cross, the guy saying he's Blade's dad, Hannibal hacked into the computer and discovered he was trying to wreck Vlad Tepish, Dracula. Blade and King traveled the world for a few weeks looking for a guy named Jamal, but Lucas Cross said he knew where Jamal was, and they took a plane to Transylvania to find Jamal. That's when Lucas Cross turned on Blade and Hannibal, trying to force him to complete the prophecy, but when he refused, Blade and King started arguing and fighting each other right in front of Dracula's castle. And there, on the stone courtyard, Blade impaled Hannibal King right through the heart with a wooden stake, and King was turned to fiery ash, and the only thing left was his pork pie hat. And Dracula came back to life and stabbed Blade after he'd murdered all of Lucas Cross's men. And when Cross dropped the vial, Hannibal came back to life, along with every single vampire that Blade had ever killed. At the end, Blade gave Hannibal King a potion to take away his bloodthirst and his hunger. Not to give him his soul back, mind you, but at least giving him back some peace and with it a chance at a normal life. And thus ended Hannibal King's comic book story. That's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.